troubled system. We need to look at what's working and what's not working. I think uh, this is a case of what's not working. Letting criminals back on the street only to break the law over and over again. We're not doing our job. We're not we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Tonight, Denver 7 investigates putting PR bonds back under the microscope. Why is this individual given the free pass? Because that's what a PR bond is. It's a free pass. And asking how many crimes it'll take before a suspect is forced to stay in jail. He commits three crimes in a matter of a couple days and gets another PR bond in Denver. Help me understand. That doesn't make sense. A man was arrested three times, accused of crimes in four different communities, and he was allowed back on the streets after being granted a personal recognizance bond. Denver 7 Investigates has been tracking issues with these PR bonds for nearly a year. The court authorized bond essentially allows someone accused of a crime to stay out of jail without paying any money up front. All they have to do is sign a paper promising they will return to court. And that promise isn't often kept. Tonight, law enforcement officials say these PR bonds are part of a troubled system allowing more crime in Colorado. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. In the span of two days, it's a story that started with a PR bond in Pueblo. Four crimes are committed from an individual who is on a PR bond. Four cities, 117 miles, and 48 hours. Sure would have been nice if this individual stayed in jail so there wasn't future victims of crime. Cops and court records describe a trail of terror that started with a carjacking in Pueblo. Then 46 miles north in Colorado Springs, a second carjacking. From there, the trip continued north, 58 additional miles to Highlands Ranch. This video shows the stolen vehicle, a red Toyota Camry. Watch closely. You'll see what Douglas County sheriffs describe as an armed robbery. There's the car. Right, so there's the car. Watch the Camry turn around at the end of the parking lot in less than 30 seconds. The guy who's out for a lunchtime walk becomes a robbery victim. He's called over by the suspect, and then the individual produces the weapon, and obviously he's backing up right now, scared, I'm sure. Less than two hours later, Denver cops spotted the car. A records check showed the Camry was taken in the armed carjacking. Here's a picture of what police found inside the Camry. They arrested 31-year-old Michael Sandoval. Public records obtained by Denver 7 describe Sandoval as a career criminal, a violent offender, a known gang member, and his record includes multiple felonies. Two days before his alleged crime spree, court records show a magistrate with access to the same criminal history we've shown you granted Michael Sandoval a PR bond. What's the story here? The story is the saga continues. This person should be in jail. And after his arrest in Denver, a Denver judge with access to the records detailing Sandoval's alleged Colorado crime spree gave the career criminal a PR bond. Sandoval's second PR bond in less than a week. Why, you might ask? According to Denver's district attorney, the second PR bond was granted because the judge did not find probable cause. What message do you think the system sent by giving this guy another PR bond? It's the same uh, message that uh, I think your stories have highlighted in the past, that lack of consequences, lack of accountability uh, certainly doesn't reduce criminal behavior. So how did Michael Sandoval show his appreciation for the judge's get out of jail free card? Just hours after he walked out of the courthouse, this police report accuses Sandoval of committing an aggravated robbery. This time, the report says he simulated a weapon, stole another vehicle from a woman in this Denver grocery store parking lot, and then led police on a high-speed chase before he was again arrested. Michael Sandoval is 22 CR. Within hours of his second arrest in less than three days, Michael Sandoval was back in a jail jumper and back before a judge. Your Honor, we would, we're asking for a personal recognizance bond. And his court-appointed attorney asked for the trifecta just hours after police accused Sandoval of a multi-city, multi-victim Colorado crime spree the public defender asked the judge to grant a third PR bond in less than a week. But this time, Denver's district attorney's office essentially said, 
enough is enough. Your Honor, I do have some very serious concerns about this case. And some of those concerns include this memo from a Denver detective. The memo included, please keep this guy in custody. He is violent and dangerous. This time the judge got the message calling for a $50,000 bond. Make it a cash only bond. This will be monitored by a GPS unit. But here's the unanswered question. Why did it take multiple arrests for multiple crimes involving multiple victims of a guy considered a career criminal with a felony record and a known gang member before the legal system finally slowed down Michael Sandoval? A question that may now explain why police are frustrated. How do you look at those victims and say, we're doing our job? Sadly, what has happened is the system is breaking down and it's telling the victims of crime, you're not that important. Ultimately, insight and perspective on courthouse accountability from two of Colorado's top cops. People deserve to be safe in their community, and when you have repeat violent offenders that are getting multiple PR bonds throughout the entire state, uh, we got issues. The issue with Michael Sandoval is also amplified when you realize his criminal record shows a history of failing to appear. This time, the judge's cash-only bond created a speed bump that has kept Sandoval behind bars. His next court hearing will be Monday in Denver. And a request to speak with Denver's presiding judge regarding PR bonds was declined. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski.